Hello, hello, and welcome to the Legion Artifact Appearance Guide for Shamans. Making this video has been a bit of a journey for me. I think the Shaman class is the one I know the very least about in WoW, and it's actually a little embarrassing how little I knew before I started work on this guide. I didn't even know the name of the healing spec of the class. What does that say about my awareness in punks? Shamans are a very versatile class with a lot of healing abilities across the board of all specs. They were initially introduced as a horde only class, but became available in the Burning Legion for Alliance characters as well when the Draenei race was added to the game. Shamans channel the power of the elements and can summon elementals to aid them in battle. For a change, I'll begin the guide with the healing spec of today's class. Restoration shamans were in Legion given the mace Shara Stahl, Scepter of the Tides. Equipping the weapon back then automatically equipped the offhand shield, Shield of the Sea Queen, which would change tint simultaneously with the scepter. The scepter was created by Queen Ashara herself, and the story goes as follows. A powerful scepter created by Queen Ashara long ago, before her transformation into a naga. The scepter swirls with waters from the Will of Eternity prior to its corruption, granting the scepter great magical and restorative powers. The scepter of Ashara was lost during the War of the Ancients, shortly before Ashara and many of her followers were swallowed by the sea. Taken up by surviving night elves who knew nothing of the power it truly held, it was buried with an unknown priestess in a family tomb in Asuna waiting to be discovered by someone that could unlock its true potential. You first unlock the base blue tint of Shara Stahl, Scepter of the Tides, when you embark on your class war campaign and choose to pursue this artifact weapon. The green tint of Shara Stahl is then unlocked by recovering one of the pillars of creation. You're rewarded with one of the pillars when you finish the entire questline in one of the Broken Iron Zones. The Ages of Agrimar from Stormheim, the Hammer of Kasgoth from High Mountain, the Tears of Elune from Melchira, the Tight Stone of Golganeth from Azuna, or the Eye of Amon Sul from Surmar. The yellow tint is unlocked by recovering Light's Hut and bringing it to your class hall. You do so by picking up the quest A Falling Star from Katgar and Dalaran. Lastly, by completing the first major campaign out of several in your class hall, you unlock the purple tint of Shadow Star. Scepter of the Deep is the second appearance for Shara Stahl and is unlocked with the completion of your entire Shaman class war campaign. The blue and green tints are unlocked with the Forged for Battle achievement, which you are rewarded with by the end of the class war campaign. The purple tint of Scepter of the Deep is automatically unlocked when you reach level 50 on your Shaman character. And the yellow tint is the reward for completing the Archaeology achievement this side up. This achievement requires you to complete 8 out of 10 rare projects around the Broken Isle zones. Each project varies, includes different objectives and are on a 2 week rotation. As such, be careful not to miss a project when it comes around, or you might have to wait quite a while for it to come back. You pick up each project from your archaeology trainer in Dalaran. The lengthy and tedious balance of power questline rewards Restoration Shamans with a Titanborn appearance in its base gold tint. While this questline is annoying, I recommend doing it as it does unlock a lot of cool weapon appearances across your board of characters. I've left a link to the questline in the description below. With the completion of the questline you get the achievement Improving on History, which unlocks Titanborn. Afterwards you can unlock the other three tints as well killing eight world bosses in the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement unlocks the green tint of Titanborn. The blue tint is a reward for completing a 15 plus mythic Keystone dungeon in the current season, right now this is a Shadowlands dungeon. And the red tint will be unlocked with the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which requires a list of Legion dungeon achievements. For Restoration Shamans, Totem Bearer is the PvP unlockable artifact appearance. Each tint would be unlocked as you rise in honor levels through PvP activities. The blue tint of Totem Bearer is unlocked at honor level 10. The red tint is a reward for reaching honor level 30. At honor level 50 you unlock the green tint. And at honor level 80 you're rewarded with the gold tint of Totem Bearer. 
The Mage Tower Challenge back in Legion rewarded Restoration Shamans with the Frozen Fate artifact appearance. As I keep mentioning, the Mage Tower Challenge was a feat of strength and is thus no longer doable. Which, in turn, makes the artifact appearance non-unlockable to those of us who did not succeed in the challenge in Legion. For those that did, however, they would have unlocked the base blue tint of Frozen Fate and can still today unlock the other three colors. The golden tint is a reward for completing 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty. You can choose to do these alone or in a group, it'll count both ways. When you win 10 rated battlegrounds with Frozen Fate unlocked, you're rewarded with the red tint of the appearance. And by defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the green tint of Frozen Fate. The hidden artifact appearance for Shadow Star is Serpent's Coil, and heck yes, is all I'm saying. This is one awesome maze, and it's a relief for me to see it's not associated with the Mage Tower challenge. That would have been such a shame. You unlock the Serpent's Coil in its base green tint first, rather easily by obtaining the item Coil of the Drowned Queen from the Eye of Ashara dungeon, which is also rather appropriate given the artifact's history. The item can drop from Lady Hate Coil or Warlord Pages, or Pages according to Wowhead. It is also worth mentioning that you need not be in Restoration spec for the item to have a chance to drop. After obtaining the item and unlocking the base tint, you unlock the blue tint of Serpent's Coil by completing 30 Legion Dungeons. This can also be done by yourself or in a group, on any difficulty. By completing 200 well quests all over Azeroth after obtaining Serpent's Coil, you can unlock the purple tint of the artifact appearance. And finally, killing a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction rewards you with the red tint of the hidden artifact appearance. Elemental shamans are really a bit of a jack of all trades, aren't they? At least that's the impression I got from the spec after playing it in the making of this video. The spec has got ranged and melee attacks as well as healing abilities similar to that of a Shadow Priest without the risk of self-damage. It really piqued my interest, so when I finish all my other chores, I think I need to take a closer look at shamans. Elemental shamans furthermore use fist weapons, and the Legion artifact weapon that the spec gets is also indeed a fist weapon. The Fist of Raden is given to you in its base blue tint when you choose to pursue the artifact in the beginning of your class war campaign. I really enjoyed the campaign to obtain this item, and this is what the artifact book has to say about it. The mythical highkeeper Ra bore two great items in his battles against the old gods. One was the Fist of Raden, a weapon infused with the destructive might of storms. The other was the Highkeeper's Ward, a shield pulsing with the primordial elements of fire, earth, air and water. No one has successfully wielded these armaments since they passed from Ra's care. Even Lei Shen, Thunder King and Emperor of the Mogu could not. Will you succeed where he failed? Equipping the Fist of Ra Den automatically also equips the shield, the Highkeeper's Ward, in your offhand. The purple tint of the Fist of Raden will be unlocked when you retrieve one of the Pillars of Creation and bring it to your class hall. The silver tint is a reward for recovering our its hut and bringing it to your class hall. And the golden tint is unlocked by completing the first major campaign in your Shaman class hall. The Storm Keeper artifact appearance is unlocked in space blue and green tint when you complete the entire campaign in your Shaman class hall. The Golden Tint is unlocked automatically when you reach level 50 on your Shaman character, regardless of spec. And the Yellow Tint of Stormkeeper is a reward for completing the archaeology achievement this side up. The Almost Lava-inspired Earthspeaker appearance is unlocked through the Balance of Power questline. As I've mentioned a couple of times, the questline is tedious and you want to do it on a well-geared, high-level character or with a solid group, for some of the quest objectives at least. With the Balance of Power questline completed, you're rewarded with the achievement Improving on History and the Earth Speaker appearance in its fiery red tint. Following that, you can unlock the green tint by killing 8 world bosses in Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The blue tint can be unlocked after Balance of Power by completing a 15 plus Mythic Keystone dungeon in the current season for the Keystone Master achievement. And lastly, by earning the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, 
you'll unlock the purple tint of Earthspeaker. The PvP associated artifact appearance for elemental shamans is the Fist of the Fallen Shaman. You unlock each tint by increasing your honor level. The purple tint of Fist of the Fallen Shaman will be unlocked when you reach honor level 10. By honor level 30, you unlock the green tint. The blue tint is a reward for reaching honor level 50. And at honor level 80, finally, you unlock the red tint of Fist of the Fallen Shaman. Rhaegar's legacy was in Legion unlocked through the Mage Tower challenge for elemental shamans. Unfortunately, this challenge is no longer up and doable, so for those who did not complete it back then, Rhaegar's legacy is no longer available. For those who did, however, they'd have obtained the blue tint of the artifact appearance and can still today unlock the three other colors. The yellow tint will be unlocked once you complete 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty. This can be done by yourself or in a group. Winning 10 rated battlegrounds unlocks the red tint. And when you defeat Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the turquoise tint of Rhaegar's legacy if you completed the Mage Tower challenge back in Legion. The hidden artifact appearance for the Fist of Ra Den is Prestige of the Almani, and I really love this. It's such a witch doctor befitting appearance. <laughs> you unlock the Prestige of the Almani by acquiring the item Lost Codex of the Almani. The item quite simply drops from the rare mobs in Dalaran Underbelly. However, the drop chances are low, and with the PvP sometimes going on in the Underbelly, it might not be as easy to get the item. When you get it, however, you unlock Prestige of the Amani in the base turquoise tint. The green tint will be unlocked afterwards by completing 30 Legion dungeons on any difficulty. By completing 200 world quests after obtaining the hidden artifact appearance, you unlock the gold tint. And lastly, the blue tint is a reward for killing a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction after unlocking the hidden appearance. Enhancement shamans are given Doomhammer as their artifact weapon in Legion. This weapon was previously wielded by both Orgrim Doomhammer and Thrall himself. Equipping this weapon will place a second maze in your hand, Fury of the Stone Mother, a hammer seemingly made out of molten rock itself. You first unlock the base grey tint of Doomhammer when you choose to pursue the artifact weapon in the beginning of your class war campaign as an enhancement shaman. The black tint is a reward for recovering one of the Pillars of Creation and bringing it to your class hall. By finding Light's Heart at the end of a falling star questline and bringing that too to your class hall rewards you with the gold tint of Doomhammer. And when you complete your first major campaign in your class hall, you unlock the green tint of your artifact weapon. Stormbringer morphs Fury of the Stone Mother into a weapon of lightning and is unlocked in blue and in gold when you complete your entire class hall campaign with the achievement Forged for Battle. The green tint of Stormbringer will automatically be unlocked when you reach level 50 on your shaman character. And the archaeology achievement This Side Up rewards enhancement shamans with the Stormbringer appearance in red. Legion's Doom is just awesome, okay? And it's unlocked through the Balance of Power quest line. I think I've said this enough, but again, just go and get this achievement done, okay? It unlocks so many awesome Legion weapon appearances. The base green tint of Legion's Doom is unlocked when you get the achievement Improving on History by completing Balance of Power. Afterwards, you can unlock the blue tint of the artifact appearance by killing 8 world bosses in the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosity achievement. By completing and timing a 15 plus Mythic Keystone dungeon in the current season, after unlocking Legion's Doom, rewards you with the gold tint. And the purple tint is a reward for earning the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which is associated with Legion dungeon achievements. The Black Hand's Fate artifact appearance is unlocked through PvP honor levels for enhancement shamans. Remember that honor levels are count wide and thus you won't have to grind this through all of your characters. By honor level 10, you unlock the golden tint of Black Hand's Fate. The turquoise tint is a reward for reaching honor level 30. At honor level 50, you unlock the green tint. And by honor level 80, you're rewarded with the red tint of Black Hand's Fate. Typhoon, which turns your Fury of the Stone Mother into what looks like frozen crystal, was unfortunately unlocked with the Mage Tower challenge back in Legion. Thus, sadly, for those who did not complete it two and a half years ago, Typhoon is not unlockable. 
Those that did complete the challenge, however, have unlocked the turquoise tint of Typhoon, and as that is the space tint, you can still today unlock the three other tints. The silver and black tint will be unlocked by completing 10 different Legion dungeons, by yourself or in a group. By winning 10 rated battlegrounds after unlocking Typhoon, you're rewarded with the green tint of the artifact appearance. And after defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the sky blue tint of Typhoon. Sandalar Champion is the hidden artifact appearance for Enhancement Shamans. And do I smell a troll theme here? You unlock the hidden artifact appearance first in its turquoise tint by acquiring the item the War Maze of Shivala. Though the item was long ago lost at sea, it has a 100% chance to drop from the world bosses Flotsam in High Mountain and Levantus in Azuna. Whichever you kill first will drop the item. Isn't it relieving? for once to have one hidden artifact appearance easily obtained. After unlocking Sandalar Champion in Space Tint, you can unlock the Golden Tint by completing 30 Legion Dungeons on any difficulty of your choosing. The Purple Tint is a reward for completing 200 World Quests anywhere on Azeroth. And finally, the Blue Tint will be unlocked once you've killed a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Now. Next time will be the 10th class I tackle in this Legion Artifact Appearance series. After that, I need to come up with a new project. I do have a couple of things in mind, but if any of you have something you're having trouble with, or something you wish me to make a video about, please let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching this video and for watching the entire series. Welcome to new subscribers, I hope you're enjoying your stay here so far. If any of you wish to follow me on Twitter, I put the link here and in the video description. Until next time, when I'll be talking about the Priest Artifact Weapon Appearances. Take care!